In this lesson, we're going to look at similar areas. So, for example, if you multiply the side lengths by a scale factor, then what happens to the area? Firstly, let's look at this example. Can you work out what would happen to the perimeter of a rectangle if you multiplied each side by 3? So we've got a rectangle here, side length 2 and 4. Another rectangle here, side length 6 and 12. You can see that corresponding sides have been multiplied by 3. 2 times 3 is 6. And 4 times 3 is, is 12. So if you look at the perimeter of this, the perimeter is the distance all the way down. So 4 up to along 4 down to so 4 and 4 makes 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this is 12. It could be metres or centimetres, whatever unit you were using. So what happens when you times the side lengths by 3? What happens to the perimeter? So 12 and 12 makes 24. And 6 makes 30. And our 6, that makes 36. So what's happened to the perimeter? Well, 12 times 3 makes 36. So the, when you um, triple the side lengths, then the perimeter also triples. But can the same be said for the area? Well, we have to look at a bit more detail with that. So let's look at the, the 2 by 4 in terms of squares. So as we know exactly that, that yellow 1 square is the same as that green square. So the same as before, we've got a side length of 2 here and a corresponding side length of 6, which has been multiplied by 3. And we have a side length of 4. And it's been times by 3 to give you a side length of 12. And we're trying to investigate what happens to the area. Now, area is length times breadth. So 2 times 4 gives you 8 here. Now, to, if, this, if the area tripled, then this area should be 24. However, we can see this area is not 24 because 6 times 12 is 72. So what's actually happened to the area? Well, if you take this here, you can see well, there's 1. We'll fit in, two areas will fit in, three areas will fit in, four areas will fit in, five, you can probably see now it's going to be nine, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine of those areas, you can see from the area here, eight times nine makes 72. So if the, if the linear scale factor was 3, that's just a normal scale factor, we call it a linear scale factor here, if that was 3, then the aerial scale factor was 9. How did we get from 3 to 9? Well, 8 times by 3. Well, what's happening with that then? Well, really just 3 squared. If you take 3 squared, you get to 9. So does that work every time? If the linear scale factor is, is a value, do you square? the linear scale factor to get the area scale factor. Let's look at another example then. Imagine you've got um, an area of 1 times 3. Let's this time make the scale factor 5. So you can see the corresponding side 1 and 5. So that this 3 times by 5 you get 15. So the linear scale factor is a multiple of 5. Now, if you squared this, you would get an area scale factor of 25. Now, do 25 of these fit in here? Well, let's look at the areas first. The area of this one's 3, isn't it? 3 times 1. And the area of this one's 5 times 15, which is 75. Now, is 3 times 25 75? Oh, yes, it is. Does this fit in that 25 times? Well, let's have a look. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We can do that 5 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we can do that 5 times. There's twice, so that's 10, 15, 20, 25. So that does, that fits in there 25 times. I'll just get rid of that. Okay, so what we're effectively saying is, if you want to know how much bigger the area gets, if you get the normal scale factor, the linear scale factor, and you square it, that will give you an area scale factor. Okay, so let's have a look at some questions that might be asked. 
The two pictures of the butterflies are similar. So it tells us that we've got a length 3.6 and a length 7.2 and it's saying the area of the wings is 10 centimetres squared. It's got three parts here. Calculate the linear scale factor, which is just your normal scale factor. Then calculate the area scale factor and then calculate the area of the larger butterfly. So three different bits. Now the first thing we're going to do is calculate the linear scale factor, which is just your normal scale factor. So take your second number, your side, and divide it by your first number. So 7.2 divided by 3.6. And your answer to that is 2. So that's this first bit done. Calculate the area scale factor. Well, we get our linear scale factor and we square it. An easy way to, to think of this is, if you've got units for area, then they're centimetres squared. So that's the way I remember it. So I always square the linear scale factor. That comes out to be 4. So basically this area here is four times bigger than this smaller one. So finally to work out the area of the bigger one, we know the smaller one's 10, so the area of the bigger picture is 10 times 4, which is 40 centimetres squared. Okay, finally let's look at an exam question involving this. Um, it's from 2002, the standard grade paper, uh, the credit paper. So. A necklace is made of beads which are mathematically similar. It gives us some side lengths here or heights. So the height of the smaller bead is 0 0.8. And it also tells you its area is 0 0.6 square centimetres. The height of the larger bead is 4 centimetres. Find the area of the larger bead. So the, the, the setup for this is the same as you did in the last example. Basically you want to get the linear scale factor first by looking at the sides. So second number divided by first number. So that's 4 over 0 0.8. Just use your calculator because it's a calculator paper and that comes out to be 5. Because we're dealing with area scale factors here, you can see that with that bit there, then you want to square this 5. So the next line, area scale factor is 5 squared, which is 25. We now know that this area is 25 times bigger than the smaller one. Now, what was the area of the smaller one? When you look through and back and you think, oh, the area was 0 0.6. Okay, so the area of the larger one is the smaller one, 0 0.6, times 25, and that's 15 centimetres squared. So three mark question, one marks, two mark, and three marks.